Last year, I built myself this stunning custom PC build to go in my second setup. It's a beautiful build, runs really nicely and perfectly matches the aesthetics and vibes of this setup. But there are always things that you end up wanting to change and upgrade and I found a few in this build. So today we're going to be doing just that. Let's get into it. So I built this custom PC last year in the NZXT H5 flow case before later switching it out into the new H6 flow instead. And if you've been around a while, you may have seen the original build video on the channel. If not, it's well worth going and checking that out. But with switching to the new case, there were a few drawbacks. Firstly, the H5 flow only had room for a 240mm radiator, so I used this Kraken Elite 240 RGB in the build. But the H6 flow supports a 360mm radiator, meaning that when I installed the cooler, it left this space at the front which just looks a bit off to me. I also had the problem that the H5 flow case was the RGB version, so had RGB fans included to match the cooler fans. The H6 flow, however, is not the RGB variant, so we have these two RGB fans on the cooler which don't match any of the other case fans. For the cables to the motherboard and GPU, I just used the standard ones that came with the power supply, but they don't look very appealing or match the aesthetics of the build. And finally, I didn't have a mount for the GPU, so I installed it horizontally, which looks okay, but isn't my preferred method of doing so. So when I decided I wanted to make some changes, I reached out to NZXT and they were more than happy to help me fix things up by supplying some gear. First up, we have the Kraken Elite 360 RGB cooler, which is literally the same as my current cooler, except it has a 360mm radiator instead of my current 240 and will fit this case much better. Then they also sent out a bunch of RGB fans so I can remove all of the non-RGB ones, including the front fans that came pre-installed in the case, and then swap all of these out for fans that match the ones on the cooler. Next up we have a vertical mounting kit so I can vertically mount this beautiful Aero 4070 Ti graphics card and show it off in all its glory. And then finally they also included this internal USB hub as I wouldn't have had enough USB headers on my motherboard to connect everything. Then for the final piece of the jigsaw, I bought a couple of Lian Lee Strimmer Plus cables which add a splash of RGB to any build for that extra FPS. Now we've gone through all the parts, it's time to get them installed into the build. Because I'm only adding parts like the fans and cooler, I won't have to fully strip down this build which will make the process much quicker and easier. First things first, let's get the graphics card out of the build so there's more room for us to work. Then I think the next thing I'll do is remove the cooler as again these tubes are quite in the way so if I take that out first it will be easier to access the rest. A good thing with this is the fact that I'm using an identical model of cooler apart from the radiator size so I can just use the same cables and just remove the pump and radiator. Once I've carefully unscrewed the pump head from the motherboard and taken it out of the build something important to note here is always make sure that your CPU isn't stuck to the thermal paste on the back of your cooler. With the graphics card and cooler out of the way, there is now much more space in here and that will make it easier for me to get inside and remove all the case fans. The 120mm fan at the back and 240mm fans in the bottom are ones that I added when I built this PC. However, the three at the front come pre-installed in the case and normally you wouldn't need to take these out. If you haven't come across the H6 flow before, the front fans are actually angled towards the graphics card which is better for cooling as it channels air directly towards the GPU instead of towards the glass side panel like you would get in many other cases. And obviously this allows you to have great airflow while still having a glass panel on the front. So let's go ahead and get all of the case fans out of the build. With all of the fans removed, the PC is starting to look a little bit bare now. So let's get to installing our new RGB fans. We have 320mm fans to go in the front, 240mm to go in the bottom, and then a 120 to go in the back. So let's get these out of the box and ready to install into the PC. And because these are RGB fans, I will need to install an RGB hub as well, but these do come with that included. So now let's get all of the fans installed into the PC. There we go, now the PC is loaded with RGB fans for that extra FPS and is looking pretty damn good. So the next job is to install the cooler. Normally installing an AIO into a PC build is one of the longer parts of the build, but in this case it's actually going to be one of the shorter. 
Because we're just using the same model of AIO with a longer radiator, most of the assembly has already been done, so in this case we just need to get it all out of the box and attach the fans to the radiator. And once that's all been assembled, we can then mount the radiator back into the top of the case in the same place where the radiator from the old cooler was. And then we can pop the top panel of the case back into place as well. For the pump head, we already have the correct standoffs, retention bracket and cables installed from the last cooler. And it also comes with the correct bracket and thermal paste already applied. So literally all we need to do to install it into this build is to place it carefully on the standoffs and tighten the four thumb screws. Time for a quick cheeky peel and then to plug the cable into the pump head. And simple as that, the new cooler is now installed and it looks way better without the weird gap at the front or the tubes that come down in the middle. So now the next job is to install the vertical GPU. It's not for everyone, but I've always preferred the way that a vertical GPU looks in a build. And the great thing about this vertical mounting bracket from NZXT is that it comes fully assembled in the box. So all I need to do is unscrew and remove all of the slot covers from the back of the H6 flow case, then slot in the vertical mount in their place and screw it securely into the case. Now we can slot the riser cable into the PCIe slot on the motherboard, then bring back in our beautiful Aero 4070 Ti graphics card, slot it into the bracket and then make sure it's securely screwed in as well. And honestly, just look at how much better this PC build looks now. Personally, I think these Aero graphics cards are one of the best looking out there, so having it vertically mounted just shows it off in all of its glory. Now the final job is to install these Strimmer Plus cables. I've used these in a few of the other PC builds I've done in the past and I think they look really nice and add some nice lighting to the build. So first of all we can get the 24 pin motherboard cable plugged in and this is the part where I was meant to plug in a cable for the GPU as well but I ran into an issue with space which meant that I wasn't able to do it. Because of the size and location of the holes going into the back of the case I actually didn't have the space to fit both of them through without it looking cramped and terrible. So in the end I decided to use the normal cable from the PSU and just hide it behind the AIO tubes and it actually turns out to be a really clean design. By going with just the one cable it creates this much cleaner and tidier look and I'm actually really happy with the way that it turned out. So now that everything's fully reassembled it's time to get the PC back into the setup, power it on and see how it looks and I'm not gonna lie I am so happy with the final result of this build. Even with its flaws, I did already think that the PC looked great before, but just look how much these simple changes have improved the look of the PC. We no longer have a problem of fans that don't match, tubes hanging randomly down in the middle, or an AIO that's too small. Everything just looks so much tidier and nicely laid out and it just looks like it fits so well. The vertically mounted GPU looks a lot better in my opinion and the matching RGB fans just give so much more brightness to the PC build too. The new cooler looks great and because of the bigger size you no longer have the tubes obscuring the view. Honestly now that I've done this I don't know why I didn't decide to do it sooner. The inclusion of the extra RGB fans in the front of the case means that you can actually see the lighting through the front panel which looks a lot better in my opinion. And all the matching white lighting gives off this beautiful icy vibe which looks perfect in this setup. I knew that the upgrades were going to look good but this came out so much better than I even imagined. My second setup has taken shape nicely over the recent weeks and months and I am so happy with the whole vibe of this setup. It's a great place to kick back and play some games away from my main setup and the new icy cool PC is looking fantastic in here. But of course as always let me know what you guys think of the final result down in the comments. Let me know if you like how it turned out or if you would have done something different and of course let me know if you have any thoughts on what I could do to the setup next. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will catch you in the next video. See you later.